parking lot perv. So, I was 18 years old and my friend and I were walking along the spot by the beach. It's a point surrounded by water, Santa Clara Point in Mission Beach, that has a parking lot with only one way to get in or out. It's a winter morning, so it's not as populated as it could be. When we started to leave and walk back to the main street, a guy pulls up blocking our way. He's exposing himself among other things. We scream and run back to another end of the parking lot. He follows us, and every time we try getting back to the way out, he follows us and blocks us again, still exposing himself. We go down to the sand so that we could walk out that way instead, but we're worried he'd show up somewhere on the other side. We see some huge guys partying on the beach and got a better idea. We told them what was going on, and a couple of them hid by the entrance exit part. When we tried to walk out again, and the pervert blocked us again, they jumped out and ran at him yelling, You sick son of a bitch! etc. The terrified look on the guy's face was priceless. He sped off like a bat from hell. Thanks to some very kind and very large guys, it was a great ending to a scary situation. Just because it's light out doesn't mean you're safe. This is my first post, so go easy on me. After reading through these countless stories, this has quickly become my favorite sub, and I thought, I give back by sharing my own creepy experience here. It goes back to June of 2009, on Arizona State University's Temp campus. I was 21 years old. A female broadcast journalism major, taking a summer class in TV reporting. Out on an assignment for class, I was shooting B-roll at the ballpark for a story on ASU baseball and the College World Series. It was around 3pm at the time. I pulled into the parking lot, which was entirely deserted, and parked my car right next to the curb, as close to the park as I could get. June in Arizona is brutal, heat-wise, so I had every intention of making this process a short one. I left the trunk open, and my keys in the ignition with the car on to keep the AC running. The gates at the ballpark were padlocked and chained shut, so I set up my camera and tripod right outside the box office to get set up footage. I had been there for about 10 minutes, when a silver pickup pulled into the lot and parked perpendicularly in front of my car making it difficult for me to leave if I had gone in my car to drive away. At this point, I knew something was going on, because, literally, the entire lot was empty, and this guy parked about two feet away from my car. My assumptions were confirmed in the next few minutes. The guy got out of his beat-up double-cap pickup, leaving his car on, with both the front and back doors on the driver's side wide open. At that moment, he started walking towards me, seeming slightly aggressive. Physically, the guy was about 6'3 and heavy set with white hair and glasses. Probably in his 50s, he wore a dull yellow baseball cap, a filthy blue shirt and blue sweatpants. Looked like he hadn't showered or changed clothes in weeks. His face was genuinely disturbing. To this day, I cannot accurately describe the feeling I got from the expression on his face. A twisted semi-grin, but his eyes, his eyes looked menacing, like he had a screw loose. But at that moment, he, he walked with intent, with one hand in his pocket, as he headed for where I stood. I could feel at that moment his eyes burning into me. No exaggeration, I was frozen. As he approached me, he asked in a hushed tone, Is ASU playing today? He said it slowly never taking his eyes off me, still moving closer. I'll never forget how that stare felt. I was so scared at that exact moment, I knew he was trying to talk to me in some attempt to distract my attention from what I already knew. I didn't respond, so he asked again. I replied with a quick, no, picked up my phone, and answered like I was receiving a phone call from somebody else. He just stood there, still staring at me. 
I spoke loudly to ensure the man heard what I was saying. Hey, are you almost here? Okay, yeah, I see you. And I waved towards the street behind the man. As I said this, the guy slowly ambled away from me, heading towards the ballpark gate. The entire time, he did not take his eyes off me. Once, not once. He was glaring. I felt like he was angry with me. He looked furious. I took notice that it was still just he and I in that lot, and his car was parked directly in front of mine, so I would have to reverse in order to drive away. Once he was a reasonable distance away, about 25 feet, I still locked on me. I picked up my equipment and ran to my car. He followed. I was frantically attempting to repack my car, throwing my equipment into the trunk without even bothering to shut it. I was literally running back to the driver's side door when he met me there. The guy's car was still on, and his doors were still open. He reached out to grab me at that exact moment. I ducked into the driver's seat, and without closing the door, threw my car into reverse, slamming on the accelerator. I was bawling at this point. I flew out of the parking lot and drove away. I knew I had to call the police. I just knew I had to do it. This whole thing was too dangerous and fishy. But first... I wanted to get the guy's license plate number so they could actually do something about what had just happened. I don't know what possessed me to do so, but I, I went back to the ballpark. And as I pulled into the lot, the truck came barreling towards my car. He then followed me. I drove directly to the campus police station in Tomp. He drove past it. I didn't get his license plate number, but I did fill out a police report. In the end, Nothing, nothing ever came of it, as far as I know, that is. Phoenix is the abduction capital of America, and this guy's physical appearance screamed insanity. I'll never feel safe again just because it's daytime. I will never again go to a deserted area by myself. Parking lots will creep me out for the rest of my life. And I'm thinking, those are all good things. I never got my burrito. Last night, I was reading another user's post, and it made me think of this story that happened to me about two years ago. Length warning in advance, the adrenaline rush drilled a lot of detail into my memory, and I tend to ramble as it is. Almost immediately after getting my undergrad degree in philosophy and classical civilization, I landed an entry-level job in a related field, waiting tables at a high-end local Tex-Mex chain while studying and saving up to occur yet more debt in graduate school. For those of you who are or have been in this line of work, I'll be preaching to the choir, but double shifts and clove pens closing one night and opening the next morning. Pick up shifts, camping tables tend to pile up and wear on the soul. Certain vices become ever more enticing to those who wear non-slip shoes, stumbling off a shift out into the deserted shrines to consumerism that are suburban intersections flanked on all sides by shopping centers, and I felt the draw as much as the next, but despite a very strong genetic predisposition, I avoided the more damaging habits. Alcohol and nicotine, sure, but where did I go to spend some hard-earned cash? After refilling umpteen bowls of chips and serving quasi drenched chimichangas? Across the street to Chipotle, of course. Don't judge. Not digress, so, although the two restaurants are basically cattle corner from one another, the accessibility of both parking lots and the idiotic stoplight timing makes the trip approximately one cigarette long. I step out to finish my cigarette and unbutton my salsa stained shirt. It wasn't that bad. I was just really self conscious about wearing another's restaurant logo into the store, and as I do, a silver Mercedes with highly tinted windows comes screeching to a halt about two and a half spots to my left in the handicap spot closest to the store. Two and a half and that is parking job perfectly match this choice of parking spot in assholiness. I say that because the driver of this car hops out and quickly jogs up to the door before calmly proceeding to the counter 
When he realizes it's still open, he glances back a few times. Embarrassed that someone saw you? You should be, I thought. At this point, I was already feeling fuck that guy and imagining what I would never say to him when I got behind him in line. I finish my cigarette, stop out the butt, and turn around to fling my shirt into my already cluttered car. As I turn back, the passenger door of the Mercedes opens up, and a young woman sort of crawls out. It took me a second to register her presence, because I could see the asshole driver still inside, probably reaching over the sneeze guard to point at the pinto beans like an asshole, and I don't register her first timid request. She repeated, more frantically and coming towards me, clutching her purse close to her chest. Can you please help me? She must have seen me looking from her to the car to the asshole, because she glances over her shoulder then back at me. I've got warning bells and nope signs blaring inside my head, but think she may just want to bum a cigarette or something like that, when I don't instantly match her apparent growing level of panic. She looks right into my eyes and says, please, can you call the police? He's... As if the pronoun were a command, all three of us looked at each other, her and I glance at him and see him turning to glare back at us. Even though he's probably 40 yards away and inside, I see confusion, shock, and rage res register on his features almost instantaneously. Please, she begs, he's trying to kill me. At this, something deep inside me flips on, and my actions that follow are deliberate, clear, and without panic. Believe me or not, but what follows is my best recollection of the events that followed, and would be happy to address anything that is unclear or unbelievable. I fling open my rear door, simultaneously apologizing for the mess, a coat, some bags, books, and whatnot, and telling her to just shove that stuff out of the way or just hop on the top, it doesn't matter. It felt like she dove in head first. I still had no idea what was going on, but my first priority was safety, and that means dialing 911 and getting it ringing before starting my car, putting on my seatbelt, and checking my surroundings. The young woman is sobbing in the back of my car, and I saw assholes sprinting towards the door of the restaurant. I like to tell you I pulled a perfect tire schooling reverse 180, because that's what it felt like, but it was just a very quick and jolting point turn. Meanwhile, the 911 operator picked up, and after briefly giving my name and location just in case, I handed the phone to my passenger to explain the situation so I could focus on the escape. As I mentioned before, Accessibility for this parking lot is shit, so I had two choices. Go out the nearest entrance next to the Chipotle and risk getting caught at a light, or quickly dash away from him to the far one. I chose the latter, but before I got onto the main road, an idea hit me. A standalone bank broke asshole's line of sight, so I ducked into the crowded parking lot at the restaurant on the corner of the strip to hide. It was more public and populated, avoided a chase, and gave the police a stationary place to locate us. But I underestimated asshole's speed and determination as I pulled into the spot with my lights off. I see headlights accelerating down the small road through the lot. He must have seen me because he nearly drifted the sharp turn into our would-be hiding spot. My passenger began screaming at me to get the fuck out of there, almost louder than my own gut saying the same thing. And she goes back to trying to explain our situation to the operator thinking ahead, and being very lucky. I had chosen a spot from which it was possible to exit forward, and he had to either pull the world's tightest turn or go around the row, so we got a head start on the chase I was trying to avoid. I pull onto the main road and accelerate, lucky to catch a green light. Unfortunately, so does my pursuer, who is on my bumper out of nowhere, brights on, and honking like a madman. Because I'm following normal traffic laws like a dumbass, he pulled alongside my car and matched my speed. I noticed my passenger is having difficulty describing the situation, because seriously, who wouldn't? Sitting in the dark, cluttered back seat of a stranger's car, being pursued by a man who has apparently threatened to kill her? I calmly offered to help, because why the fuck not? It's not like this is the point in the movie where the tinted window rolls down and an automatic weapon sprays the side of my car. Despite myself, I take the phone and begin calmly giving the operator of the street, our direction and speed, a description of both vehicles. The operator informs me that no units are in the immediate area, 
but ask if I can get to a safe place, right as I'm racking my brain for where on earth we can go. Asshole pumped his brakes, began swerving to block the road, rolled down his window, and began pointing over the car, indicating for me to pull over. If it weren't terrifying enough, it would have been hilarious, but it gave me a chance to give his license plate just then, and another car came up on us, an asshole got confused and made room. I take the opportunity to try and get out from behind him and start coming alongside him. He accelerates to match my speed, and I can't get ahead of him. Once again, I'm in the terrifying position of driving parallel with another driver who does not want me on the road. Another bright idea pops into my head as the ray's median suddenly ended to my left. I told my passenger to hold on, and just as quickly as I tried to shake and bake, I slammed on the brakes and pulled a Yui. It took a second for asshole to correct, but soon he was on my bumper like an FBI in rush hour. But I wasn't about to let him pass. I slowed to a crawl and cut off a few attempts of his to overtake me and inform the operator of our new direction and speed. I think asshole put two and two together because his attempts to pass me became more frantic and so did the honking. Short of hopping the curb, we were a quarter mile stretch of road without an exit, the same panic I had felt just seconds before going the opposite way. Unfortunately, the operator informed me that it would be a while before units were close enough and asked me to get to a safe place. Right about this point, the road widened for the left turn lane, an asshole is beside me once again, and the light is red. We both speed up, but I can see over his car that no traffic is coming from the left, and at the last second, pull a hard right. Up this road, there is a church parking lot teenagers would use to practice driving. I could run around there for a while until the cops show up. Operator informed the responding unit to go there, just as I see asshole swing left, nearly getting sideswiped as he speeds off in the opposite direction. I head to the parking lot, and circle around until I see red and blue just in case. I thank the operator, park, and help my passenger out the car. I offered her my jacket, which she refused, and a cigarette, which she took. As the officers began questioning her, her story gave me... Her story gave me chills. To make a long story just slightly shorter, and because I don't want to violate privacy for a story... I was doing my best to avoid eavesdropping on. She had been seeing this guy for a while, and he had become increasingly more violent and demanding. That night, he told her they were going to move in together and beat her nearly senseless when she refused. He then grabbed a bunch of stuff, dragged her to the car, and was going to take her back to his place. Even in the dim parking lights, I could see the bruises on her arms. He was a carrier always coming and going through the area, and had his truck parked somewhere in the direction he fled in. She told the officers he was armed, which explains her absolute panic. That did not sink in until I got back to my house, after the officers realized I was just an unrelated, if shaken, party to the actual crimes and sent me on my way. But another fact still gives me chill. The Mercedes was her car, which I could recognize if it followed me home, but asshole knows what my car looks like and the area I used to work. So asshole driver, let's not meet. <laughs>